hello everyone. Welcome to the third Linkurious Enterprise product deep dive. And today we focus on Linkurious security and access rights. My name is Marilyn Bouteruche and I am head of customer success at Linkurious. And today I'm with Andrea Berni. Hello everyone, I am Andrea Berni and I am a solution engineer at Linkurious. So, and my role is to help our customer dealing with technical challenges and to uh, ensuring that gain the most value out of increased enterprise. Thank you, Andrea. So the purpose of this presentation is to give you an understanding of how you can leverage Linkurious Enterprise access rights to sec secure the use of our product. Uh, here is the agenda we are going to follow. First, we are going to talk about use cases, then we are uh, going to focus on how to manage users and groups. Then we'll talk about standard access rights. Then we'll focus on property key access rights. There would be demo along the way uh, to show you a real example uh, of what we're talking about. We are going to spend the next 50 minutes or so together, uh, including a Q&A session at the end of this presentation. Uh, you can type your question in the Q&A section of the webinar, and we will address them at the end uh, of the presentation. So, let's uh, give a bit of context before we dive into technical details. So, our customers are companies having different use cases. Uh, they leverage the power of graph and discover connection in their data, thanks to Linkurious Enterprise. And users are investigators, auditors, analysts, um, but there are other types of users, such as managers, data scientists, or system administrators. And we often have questions about how to distinguish these different profiles in the Curious Enterprise and how to provide them access to what they need. So let's look at a few examples. First use case. Um, let's say we're talking about a team of analysts working in the fraud department of a bank. The team is made of different profiles, some are junior and some are more senior. While the junior profiles are ramping up in their role, you may not want them to have access to sensitive data. So that's the first thing the Curious Enterprise access controls can help you achieve. Second example, um, let's say um, we are part of a system administrator a team working at a bank and we support the fraud department. As technical expert, our, one of our roles is actually to grant a user access to Linkurious Enterprise. But we already have users and groups defined in another system such as LDAP. So how can we leverage that configuration and avoid doing the same configuration twice? That's another example of what we can do with a Linkurious Enterprise access rights. Last example, um, let's say uh, we are uh, responsible for a team of analysts in a tax office. There are different team members, some are power users and some are not. Ideally, you want power users to be able to add or modify data in your database, but you don't want regular users to be able to do so. Um, and in Curious Enterprise, access rights can help you achieve that goal. So now is the time to learn how to set up these access rights. And Andrea, it's your turn. Yes, so the first topic that we are going to cover is managing users. And first of all, we can start with what is an user. Uh, an user is, can be defined as an image actor of an incurious enterprise. And as users, you have a private dashboard. And moreover, you have access to a list of data sources that is a subset of the Linkurious Enterprise configured data sources. And moreover, you have a private set of saved visualization that are basically some saved uh, graphs. You have a set of standard queries. You have a set of query templates. And finally, you have a set of custom actions. Uh, moreover, Linkurious Enterprise give you the possibility to share this, this information with other users. In Increase Enterprise, we have two different type, uh, type of uh, users uh, that do not differ in the, what they can do in Increase Enterprise, but just in the way they can be created. So the first kind of users is called a local user, 
and desk users are created and managed with the internal Inquiries Enterprise authentication system. Uh, in fact, Inquiries Enterprise comes with an internal uh, authentication system that allows you to create groups, uh, users, and so on. We will see more later. And this kind of users can only be created by an admin. Uh, more specifically, we need an admin with the managed users and group rights. And even in this case, we are going to analyze these rights later. So we can now switch to the demo. We can see how to enable the authentication. Uh, in fact, by default, the authentication is in Inquiries Enterprise is disabled. And as you can see here in the top right corner, we have the unique users. So this means that at the moment there are no users. There, are, there is just one user, but these users don't need to be authenticated in selling increase the price. In order to enable the authentication, we need to open the menu, the admin menu, and go to users and groups. And from here, increase the price asks us to enable the authentication. We can click here. And right now, we need to create the first admin users for increasing the price. So this will be an admin user with all the power. So in my case, it's my account. So I can put the email, the name of the users, and the password. I can click on Save and Enable. And now the Linkurious Enterprise login page will pop up. Uh, so here now, if I want to use the increase device, I need to enter my username or my email. So in this case, I'm going to use the name and my password. Right now, I'm logged. You can see that I am an admin, since I can reach the admin menu. And as admin, as I said before, I have the, the possibility to create other users. So if I go again to users and groups, I can click on create a users. And I want to create a second user that will be called Marilyn. Once again, I need to decide a name for this account, password for the account, and then I need to grant some access rights. Uh, for the moment, I'm not covering this part because we will have a dedicated session. So for the moment, I'm just interested in creating this user and I can click on save. And as you can see right now, we have an extra account in our system. So the second type of users are the external users. And basically, these are the users created by an external authentication system. Uh, in fact, in Chris Enterprise, you have the, the possibility to integrate some external authentication system that remains um, independent from increase the price. So this means that increase the price uh, don't need the right access to, to the systems. And at the moment, the supported external authentication system are Active Directory, LDAP, uh, single sign-on with Azure ID, uh, Google, OpenID Connect, SAML2, and ADFS. Here you can see how the increase enterprise login page changes depending the external authentication system. Uh, at the top of the page, we have the login page in case of LDAP and Active Directory. Uh, basically, uh, nothing changed. In fact, with LDAP and Active Directory, uh, when you type the username on the, and the email or the password and the password, uh, increase enterprise search for desk users in the external systems. In case of SSO, uh, as you can see, there is a, an extra form, more specifically, just an extra platform that we redirect the user to the external authentication system login page. But in case the user is already authenticated in, uh, in the browser, uh, the users can access the, the system, increase by system without tapping the, the username and the password. So once again, we can get back, come back to the demo and I want to show you how it's enabled the external authentication system. So first of all, the first thing that we need to do is to go to the global configuration of the increased device. This can be done by clicking on admin, that is here, global configuration. And here you can find all the configuration for increasing the price. And in the first part, we have the access field that's contained all the configuration for the authentication system. And here we need just to have an extra JSON object that contains all the configuration of our authentication system. In my case, I'm going to use LDAP. So I just copy here the configuration JSON object for, for the LDAP and click on save. So 
all their desk configuration objects can be found in our documentation. And so depending on your system, you need just to copy and pass the configuration object here and modify all the parameters. Now we need to restart the system. It's going to take a while. Now I want to switch to another um, browser page where basically we want to log in as a final uh, name users. And in my case, I want to be logged with Euler. That is a, a neutral already existing in my external system. So I'm going to put here my username, my password, and put sign into the system. As you can see right now, I'm logged inside the system, but you can read that I don't have access to any data source in Cruise Enterprise. So that's that's why when you log in with an extra external authentication system, you are not assigned to any group. And for this reason, I'm going to introduce you the groups and how to manage them in Cruise Enterprise. Even in this case, I want to start with what is a group. So a group. Uh, is a set of users who share the same rights. And these rights can be configured by an admin in the group edit panel. Um, basically, as admin, you have the possibility to modify the, all the rights for some specific groups, but not for some for others. And we will see later what is possible to do. And moreover, we have that and users can belong to more than one single groups. Um, in this case, the user grants rights from all groups is belong to, and we have that the rights are cumulative. So what is a right? A right is the permission to execute a specific action. And in increase enterprise, we use a white listing approach. Basically, the idea behind this approach is that at the beginning, you have no rights. You, you don't have the rights for um, basically doing anything in increase enterprise. And with the groups, you can grant some rights. And since this is a whitelisting approach, it means that it's not possible to deny an action. Um, regarding the rights that we have increased the price, we have three main category of rights. The first one is called general rights, where you can grant rights for performing some extra actions in a visualization, for example. We have the admin rights, that are the rights and necessary for maintaining or modifying the configuration of an Incurious Enterprise. And finally, you have the access rights, where you can give the possibility to a group to see only some data in, uh, in Incurious Enterprise. So where you have the possibility to filter the data that a user can see in Incurious Enterprise. Even in this case, we have two different types of groups. The first one is called building group. And basically, it's a predefined set of increased enterprise groups. And basically, these groups are available for all the configured data sources. So as soon as you, as you configure a new data source in increased enterprise, you're, you will already have a set of pre-configured uh, groups. And in this case, the rights for these groups cannot be modified. And in fact, they are pre-configured. And here, you can see the list of the available bidding groups. So we can very briefly start with the read-only um, groups. Um, the name is, is quite self-explanatory. It's a group where the user can just read the, uh, the graph without having the possibility to, to modify the data. Then we have the read and run queries, when the users can once again read the data, but they cannot uh, run queries. Then we have the read and edit, where the users has the possibility have the, the possibility to uh, modify the property of some nodes or some edges. And then we have the read, edit, and delete, when the users can delete something in the time the, in a visualization. And here, bear in mind that every modification that will be performed in Incluse Enterprise will be even persisted in the data source. In fact, all the modification will be performed in the in the in the graph database. Then we have the source manager that is an user that has the possibility to modify the data sources, to, to connect a new data source, to remove an old one. And finally, we have the admin that is the most powerful users in uh, in Cruise Enterprise. The second type of groups are the custom groups. That kind of groups can be created by an Incurious Enterprise admin. And when you create this group, this will be only available for the data source where it was created. 
And in this case, you have full control on the rights. So basically, you can define any general rights, any admin rights, and any access rights. Before going into the, to the demo, we need to mention the, the schema. The schema, and basically, all the access rights in increase in the price can only be applied to the accessible data. Um, in fact, you have the possibility to filter out some, some information. More specifically, you, you can make some nodes category of edge types not available in Inclusive Enterprise. And this might be useful in, in the case, for example, your external uh, data source is not only used with Inclusive Enterprise. So the idea is that uh, the graph database might be used um, by different tools. And these tools, for example, might have some metadata property in a specific node. But if this property is not relevant for increased price, you have the possibility to filtering out this property. Or moreover, even to remove some irrelevant data, such for example, a node category or edge types, if this is not relevant for the, your use case in increased price. So let's come back to the to the demo. I'm switching back to the admin panel. So I need to log in into Inquisit Enterprise with my admin account. And now I want to show you the schema. So we need to go to the admin menu and click on data source schema that's here. And as you can see, Inquisit Enterprise automatically listed all the nodes category that I have in my data source and all the edge types. This is done um, starting from a subset of the graph database. And so it means that some property might, might be missing. But in any case, has had me, I have the possibility to add this property if we, for some reason it's missing, or even to add some new node category and edge types. Moreover, if you have very big changes in your data source, you have the possibility to relaunch the automatic schema detection. So this can be done by clicking on options in the top right corner and then relaunch detections. So in my use case, I have, I have a node category that is called widget. That for me is not relevant. And for this reason, I decided to filter out these nodes. So this means that this node does not exist in the context of an increased enterprise. So let's see how it's possible to create a new group. Once again, I need to click on admin and then open the users and groups configuration page. From here, I want to open the groups tab. As you can see, I already have uh, custom groups that has been created before. And you may notice that I have two different data source connected to my Quiz Enterprise. And now if I switch to Crunchbase database, my custom groups does not exist. In fact, uh, as I said before, these groups only exist uh, in, in the specific da data source where it, this was created. So now I want to create another group, so I can click on create a group. And this is the, um, the group creation page, where of course I need to, um, to type the name of the, of the group. And in my company, I have um, two different teams. The first one is called Analyst, and I have a second team that is called Inspector. So I'm going to call this group inspector and here I can set up the general rights for uh, for this group so we can start from the query rights where by default they have no access to to the query rights but I can say that this kind of users can run queries so it means that starting from authorization they have the possibility to run some queries they can create read-only queries and run queries so these users will be able to create some new queries that's are only reading the, the data source. So they will not be able to change the, the content of the data source. And finally, we have the can create, read, um, and write queries and write queries. So before going on, we need to mention that um, once again, that's the change that will be performed with a write query uh, will affect all the users and all the existing visualization in a course enterprise. So be sure that this action is compatible with update data strategy in your company. Um, finally, we even need to say that even if I am a, I am a user that can only run queries, 
if someone else share a right query with me, I will be able to execute this query. So potentially, if I have only the possibility to run a query, have the possibility to change the data source. So let's go on. We have the custom action rights, and basically is the, the same as queries where by default they have no access to custom actions. I can have the rights for running some custom action in a visualization. And finally, I have the possibility to create even a new um, custom action. So in this case, the inspector don't have the possibility to run custom action, and so I leave it with no access. Finally, we have alerts, where basically we are providing the, the rights for see the results coming from, from an alert, or to see the results and to create a new alert. So. Andrea? Yes. I'm just stepping in, uh, stepping in here to indicate to our audience that we do have a document explaining what queries, alerts, and custom actions are. You can see the links uh, in the handouts section uh, of this uh, webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Marlene. So we can go on with the admin rights. That are the rights for managing and changing the increased enterprise configuration. And starting from the first one, we have the manage users and groups. Uh, with these rights, we are saying that the users belonging to these groups will be allowed to create and edit users and to create out and manage groups. Then we have the manage data source schema. And if I have these rights, I can modify the schema. Uh, we have the manage data source default styles. In fact, every data source comes with a default styles. Um, that can only be changed by an admin, um, more specifically with an admin that has the manage data source, the full site rights. Then we have the array index, the data source. With these rights, I will be able to start the, the indexing process for my data source. And finally, we have the reconnect the data source rights. So in this case, if for some reason the, um, the data source is no longer connected to increase in the price, if I am an admin with these rights, I will be able to restart the connection. So if we click on next, we can see now that there is another page that is access right page. More specifically here, we have the standard access right page. And starting from the schema, we have all the node categories and the hash types. And as you can see under the node category, we don't have the widget because they have been filtered up in the, in the schema. And for every category, I have the possibility to set up four different kinds of access rights. So the first one is known. That means that these, the users belong to these groups will not be able to see anything related to the, the bank account. So we, they will not be able to see the, the, uh, these nodes. We can grant them the possibility to read the bank account nodes, where they will be able to read and to visualize these nodes in a visualization. We can even grant the rights for editing these nodes. This means that they will be able to modify the property of these nodes. And finally, have the read, edit, create, and delete rights. So um, with this kind of uh, access rights, these users will be able to do everything with bank accounts. So they will be able to read the bank accounts, uh, modify the property of the bank accounts, or even to create and delete some nodes. Uh, with the bank account category. In my case, what I want to do is that an inspector can only see person nodes. So here I have the person nodes category. I want to run the resources. So um, another thing that I want to do is to run desk users uh, the rights for um, reading all the sensitive information of a person. So in my case, in my schema, I have the email notes. So I want to run the read access to an email notes. And then I want even to run the access for reading the phone note. Another thing that I want to do is to allow these users to see how the person emails and um, phone numbers are connected in our graph. So we need even to give them access to the has email and has phone uh, edge. Otherwise, we will not be able to navigate from a person to an email or from an email to a phone. So even in this case, I'm granting the has email and has phone with access. And that's it. I can click on save. And as you can see right now, we have a brand new custom groups 
that's what's being created. Now, if we come back to the users, what I can do is to assign, assign header to this group. So I can click on the fancy hero, I can edit the users, and I can grant him some access right. So here we have the list of the building groups, but if we scroll down, we have the, the custom groups. So Euler is an inspector, so I want to do the inspector, right? And I can click on save. So let's see what change with Euler. We can come back to the end users panel. We can log in again with Euler. As, as you can see right now, I can see that I'm connected to the AML data set. And here from the search bar, I will be able to search for some person. So in the case, I'm going to search for a team equipment. I can visualize this node, and I can see that there are two different related uh, nodes connected to the team equipment. I can expand it, and as you can see, I can only see what has been specified in my group. So only the, for the email nodes and the phone nodes. And from the, the menu of the nodes, as you can see, I don't have the possibility to modify the content, and I don't have the possibility to run some queries. So what about the external authentication system? Uh, what may happen is that you already have some groups specified in your external authentication system. And what you can do is basically to map these groups into an increased enterprise. So as you can see here, for every group, we have an ID number that is here. For example, analysts have the ID number number 20. And let's say that in my company, all the new users that come from LDAP should be analysts. What I can do is to go to the global configuration. Once again, in the access field, I can decide what I need to map. So in my case, I'm going to add a new line here, and you can say that all the new external users will be assigned to the group, the group number 20, that is analyst. So I can save, and I can restart the server. Why the increase in the price is restarting? We need to say that if we have multiple groups in increasing the price, we have the possibility to have a one-to-one one -one mapping. So for every external uh, group, can have a specific inter increase in the price internal groups. So we can go out, we can now log in, and I'm now trying to log in with a new user that is called Einstein, that is already existing in my external system. Once again, I need to input the password here. And right now, I'm logged. So this means that I have been assigned to a group that is basically inside the AML data source. And once again, I can search for Timmy. And it's what I, I'm allowed to see here. So as analyst, what I can do is to see all the connected nodes to, that we have, starting from the personal nodes. In fact, I have six different connected nodes. But as an analyst, I don't have the possibility to, to see sensitive, uh, sensitive data. In fact, from from, analyst, from Timmy Quibot, when I expand Team Rebot, I don't have any uh, email or phone number here. Moreover, as analyst, I have the possibility to run some queries and to even to execute and to read some, some alerts. In fact, as you can see here, I have the alerts menu that is available here. Once again, let's come back to the admin menu, uh, sorry, to the admin panel. So I'm going to log in with my account. Okay. Uh, we mentioned before that in increased enterprise, you have the possibility to assign multiple groups to us uh, single users. And let's say that in my company, we have a third group that is a sort of um, supervising groups that basically they can do um, all the on everything that the analyst and the spectrum can do. So basically they can navigate the graph uh, starting from a person node, but they can even see the sensitive data of a person node. So in my case, I want to change the access rights for Marilyn. So I'm going to edit her account here. I can remove the read, edit, and delete rights, and I want to add the new one. So 
As I said before, Marine as supervisors have the same power as an analyst, but he, he he's, uh, even has the, the rights for um, reading the sensitive data. So here I want to add even the inspector group to Marine. So we can save it and let's see what's changed from the Marine account. So I'm logging in with the Marine account. Right now I'm logged as Marine and I want to open once again the Rebot. And as you can see here, right now there are eight different nodes connected to the Rebot. And if I expand them, I can see all, uh, all the bank accounts, all the companies that are connected to the Rebot, but even the sensitive data can from the email nodes and the phone nodes. Mm. Here, another thing that we can see is that as analyst, I have the possibility to modify uh, the notes. In fact, if I right click on a note, as you can see here, I can click on edit for modifying the property of the notes. But uh, since this right is not um, granted to, um, to the inspector, I will not be able to modify the, the email notes. This is because as inspector, I don't have this right. But, even if, as expected, I don't have the possibility to run quiz, I have this possibility as analyst, and so I will I will see perhaps this uh, this possibility when I have multiple groups assigned to my to my users. So as you can see, I can run some query. So we can see here that in my personal notes, we have uh, the reality we have some sensitive data that come from annual revenue and profession. So in a certain way, uh, the standard assets rights, in my case, not strong enough for hiding this kind of information to, to the analyst. And that's the reason why in Cruise Enterprise, we have uh, an extra feature that is called property key assets rights. Basically, the idea behind the property key assets rights is that uh, um, you are allowed to set the desired asset rights at the property level. So for every single node and for every uh, edge, you have the possibility to specify uh, which are the grants for every property of the nodes and of the edges. Um, property key asset rights can only be applied to the custom groups. So it's not possible to uh, change the, the asset rights for the billing groups. And moreover, before enabling the property key asset rights, you need to have the, the schema in the strict mode. So let's see how we can do this in Ecruise Enterprise. I'm coming back to my admin uh, login. So from here, as you can see, there is a, a selector where that's the property key access right. And actually, this is turned off. If I click here, I can decide to switch on the property key access right. And there is a pop-up that say, okay, in order to enable the property key access rights, you need to enable the, the strict mode for, for the schema. Okay, let's do it. If I click here, I'm redirected to the, to the schema page. And from here, I can switch to the strict mode. What is the strict mode? Uh, basically, the strict mode um, is where you define all the types uh, of every single property. In fact, in increasing the price, you have the possibility to define the type of every property. So in this case, I have a contract ID that is a string, but I can select different types, like for example, number dates and so on. And always in the strict mode, uh, the schema is fixed. So even if I have the possibility to add new nodes from a visualization, I will be only allowed to add nodes that are already in the schema. So I'm not, I will not be allowed to create a new node category or a hash types. So let's turn on the switch, the, the strict modes. As you can see, I receive an alert because there are some nodes uh, edges that are not properly configured. Um, in my case, I have a widget that was already filtered out, so we don't care about this. And I have a has transferred aggregated where there is a property where the type is not specified. So in my use case, this is not relevant. So I want to go on and switch the strict mode. Now, as you can see, every property here is fixed. And if I want to modify the schema, I need to enable the uh, edition. 
So let's go back to their users and groups page and let's try to enable the uh, property key access right. I click on switch on, we confirm, and now the property key access right is activated. Let's see what changed. So let's go back to the analyst because we saw that as analyst, I don't have the right for reading uh, sensitive information. So I want to do is to edit this group. Nothing changed here. We can click on next. And here we have the access right page where in the left side we, we have the, all the available uh, categories and all the available hash types. And if I click on person, as you can see, we have the general right for the, for the category and then we have the property rights. So as I said, I said before, this user should not be able to see the annual revenue for, uh, for the nodes. So I'm removing the access to this property. And finally, I want to remove the professional. So once again, I'm going to click on non access and save. So let's see what's changed in uh, in Cruise Enterprise. We have a uh, user belong to this group that is called uh, Einstein. So we can come back to the end users in Cruise Enterprise. We are going to exit and log out from Marine accounts. We are going to Einstein. With each password. And now I'm going to search once again for Timmy Cribble. As you can see, I'm still able to, to reach this node, to reach this node. I can expand the node, so nothing changed here. But if I click on Timmy Cribble from the left panel, we don't have more any more access to the, to the profession and to the other revenue. I will always have, have the possibility to modify the nodes. But since I'm in the, in the suite most, I don't have the, the possibility to add a new property or to modify what I cannot I, I cannot see. So in my case, the annual revenue and the profession. So that's all um, for, for the demo and for the technical presentation. And what we saw today, today is how it's possible to manage users uh, users in Chris Price, more specifically, how to manage the internal users and external users. We saw how it's possible to manage groups. Uh, more specifically, we see how it's possible to create new users, new groups in Chris Price, and how it's possible to uh, map an external users uh, with an internal inquiry enterprise uh, group. And finally, we saw the access rights. Basically, we show the standards access rights and the property key access rights. Thank you very much, Andrea. Uh, so uh, to summarize, uh, before we get to the Q&A, and again, you can uh, type your question in the Q&A section of this webinar. So we want to uh, wrap up a bit um, uh, with uh, a question. Why would you use uh, Linkurious Enterprise access rights? Well, actually, the first reason is maybe because you want to secure access to sensitive data. When you set up access rights uh, with Linkurious Enterprise, you make sure that different users have access to what they are allowed to see or modify, but not more. The second benefit you can have uh, with setting access control is if you want to secure action users can perform. Uh, these access rights allow you to define the type of actions user can perform in Linkurious Enterprise. Uh, which can be creation or use of queries or setting styles, for example. The last thing I wanted to highlight is the fact that uh, by using uh, access rights configuration in Linkurious Enterprise, uh, you can actually leverage users and groups configuration from external tools, uh, such as LDAP or Active Directory, and it saves uh, time for your IT operations. So now is the time for the Q&A. Uh, all questions are welcome. Uh